KGW News at Sunrise. It is 459. Here are your morning headlines. Just crazy video of a volcano erupting overnight on a small island in New Zealand. And it happened while dozens of tourists were exploring there. Five people have died. Many more are missing. Royal Caribbean saying some of the people on the island were their cruise ship passengers. It has been really challenging for police and rescuers to search for the people. That site still too dangerous hours after the eruption. Incredible. Back here at home in southeast Portland, a crash left five people hurt and knocked down power lines. This was yesterday on Southeast Division between 134th and 136th Avenues. Police say two cars crashed. One rolled over into a power pole. Those lines then fell onto a third car and the driver had to wait for crews to turn the power off before he could get out. A baby is safe after deputies say two women took him from his home in Bend and drove to Eugene Saturday night. This sparked a statewide search. Police did find all of them yesterday morning. One of the women is the baby's mother, but she does not have custody because of child neglect arrests. Those are your morning Monday headlines. Here's what's coming up on Sunrise. All right, Nina, let's start with the Oregon Ducks. Friday night, they put themselves in the Rose Bowl for the first time in five years by beating Utah. And now we know that they'll take on Wisconsin on New Year's Day. We're going to hear what fans are saying about the Ducks matchup with the Badgers. And we're also hearing about your holiday favorites. We're talking holiday events, favorite things to eat and drink this time of year, even favorite holiday movies. So this is the topic of conversation in this morning's edition of Drew and You. I ask you, Nina Melhoff. On this Monday morning, who is your favorite morning meteorologist whose name starts with Rod and ends with Hill? Oh, Think that about narrows it. it down a, a little bit. Let's check in with Rod Hill this morning in the Weather Center for our Monday look. How you doing, Rod? I feel like you unnecessarily pinned <laughs> Nina down to a very narrow and answer. Actually, she didn't answer the question, so <laughs> you may not be the answer. Well, that's a very good point, my friend. <laughs> Hey, we're at 45 degrees, a uh, very nice, comfortable morning. There's no wind really anywhere. We do have foggy pockets out there, dense in some locations. Of course, that can always produce just a touch of mist in the air. But generally, this is a nice dry day coming. The majority of us will see developing sunshine. So 40s out the door at the bus stop this morning. Sun breaks 47 at lunchtime, partly cloudy and about 50 degrees when the kids get out of school. Finally, I'm tracking a big, bad weather system. We'll talk about that coming up. Well, I guess we should be excited about that. All right, Rod, thank you so much. The House Judiciary Committee will likely present articles of impeachment against President Trump later this week. But this morning, lawmakers are holding another hearing on the investigation. Democrats will present evidence they say shows the president pressured Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden while withholding military aid money. The Judiciary Committee chair calls the case against the president rock solid. This is a matter of urgency to deal with because we have to make sure that the next election is conducted with integrity and without foreign interference. But Republicans are warning against a trial of the president in the GOP controlled Senate. It's going to go nowhere. And I think the American people know this is a waste of time. House Democrats are hoping to hold an impeachment vote before Christmas. So we will air today's impeachment hearing starting at 6 a.m. here on KGW. You can still catch your local news without any commercials, though, if you switch over to channel 8.2 or if you're watching on Comcast, that's channel 308. On Charter, we'll be on channel 182 and on Frontier, channel 461. You can also find us on your phone streaming on all of our social accounts. All right, in local news this morning, police shot and killed a man near Mall 205 in southeast Portland yesterday, and now they're releasing new details about that shooting. So they say it all started with a 911 call about a man armed with a knife near 103rd and Stark Street. Police also say an officer tried to shoot that man with less lethal rounds first. Andrew Chavez works in that area. He says he was walking down the street when the shooting happened. Well, I was coming across the street from Right over here, coming toward Wells Fargo, when I crossed the street, I seen the cops chasing somebody in a, in a little white car. And when I, when, uh, by the time I looked around, I seen, I heard yelling, a bunch of screaming, and then I heard two gunshots, and a person hit the ground. We still don't know the name of the man who was killed. We'll update this story once we learn more. 
Police say at least 55 gunshots rang out at an Airbnb in North Portland. It happened during a party, and while it could have been much worse, one person was hurt. This happened at North Ganton Bean and Blandina Friday night. It comes just a month after Airbnb banned party houses following a shooting at an Airbnb on Halloween that left five dead. The company's CEO also said in a tweet that they would increase efforts to stop unauthorized parties. Portland police say Airbnb is cooperating with detectives to help identify people who may have been there. We also want to tell you about three local skate shops that have been hit by break-ins in the past couple of months. The most recent break-in was at Smart Collective in the Foster neighborhood of Southeast Portland early Friday morning. About $7,000 worth of inventory was taken. The other two break-ins that were uh, that happened in the last couple of weeks. Number one, Cal Skate in Old Town. The second, Commonwealth Skateboarding in okay. Southeast Portland. Those happened in late October and early November. The owners of those shops say they're still staying positive and still supporting each other. And you, anytime it happens, happens, we'll always like go spend money at their place because they need it, and nobody wants anybody to go out of business because we're all just trying to make sure the community stays afloat and nobody loses their lease or, or their business or their, their home. Police have not come out and said yet if these three break-ins are at all connected. All right, turn into sports now, and Ducks football fans have a lot to celebrate this morning. A big Pac-12 championship win this weekend is sending the team to the Rose Bowl now, and they are playing Wisconsin, we now know. Tim Gordon is here with some of the details. Boy, fans of Oregon football really like him this weekend. Yeah, no doubt about it, Nina. Utah, in fact, was the favorite in the Pac-12 championship, but the Ducks dominated the first half, and then they got to celebrate their championship with a 37 to 15 win. It was an exciting game for sure, especially when Utah made it interesting in the second half, but Oregon had an answer for everything. And that gave them the Rose Bowl. They'll play Wisconsin on New Year's Day. A lot of celebrating after the game for the team and its army of supporters there in the Bay Area. This will be the Ducks eighth Rose Bowl appearance. And to give you a reminder of the hype of all this, this was back what it looked like in 2012 when the Ducks won the Rose Bowl. That was the first time that had happened in 95 years. A big deal. You know they want to do it again after taking out Utah. Everyone in here seems super excited. Everyone's screaming, cheering every point, every good play. So it's definitely a good atmosphere. It's just something to brag about. It's fun being a first year and then going to the Rose Bowl. I think that we came here to win. I think that... It's a whole different team than last week. And just because we can, we show you the Gatorade bath for Coach Cristobal. Again, that's what we're seeing again, isn't it? So a lot of excitement and reaction on social. David here says this Ducks team has fought until the end every game this season. I don't expect that to change. Ducks win in Herbert's curtain call. Herbert, the quarterback, of course. Naomi says, go Ducks. I like the Badgers, but not when they play my Ducks and all the great emojis there. And from Instagram, someone says, sometimes you got to stop and smell the roses. That seems very appropriate. Congrats to our University of Oregon Ducks. A lot of good stuff there. More to come in the next hour. Yeah, it's been a while. All right, Tim, thank you. Hey, meanwhile, the college football playoff is set. LSU earning the number one seed. They will take on number four, Oklahoma, in the Peach Bowl down in Atlanta. Number two, Ohio State will go against third-ranked Clemson in the Fiesta Bowl in Arizona. Both games will be on December 28th. Mm -hmm. As for the Pac-12 teams, Utah will play against Texas in the Alamo Bowl. USC faces Iowa in the Holiday Bowl. And the Huskies face off with Boise State in the Vegas Bowl, Coos taking on Air Force. It's okay. a lot of information there, Nina. A lot, a lot of, of information. football to be watching the rest of this month. I like it. You know, mm. typically uh, yeah. we all kind of melt early Friday evenings because of the shift. But I actually <laughs> was true. melt means fall asleep <laughs> yeah, on we the couch. Right. Yes, exactly. completely uh, gone for the weekend. But I actually watched that game outside of my house at a at the marathon on Burnside nice. Friday night. Yes, Utah game with a bunch of Duck night. fans. Yeah. and uh, my goodness, the Ducks looked awesome. I mean, that was yeah. as good as they looked all year. I'm thinking they win New Year's Day. That's all I'm getting at here. Uh, I don't know. I, I do think that um, uh, against Utah, it just seemed like Oregon's defensive front was too fast for the big guys in Oregon's front line because they were just – I thought they won that battle big time, Oregon's D-line versus Utah's yeah. offensive line. going to be fun, New Year's Day. We yeah. can dig into this deeper. Later. We could dig into the uh, – what do we do? We Let's dig.